Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can approximate this definite integral, the one that you see here, uh, with an error less than 0.01. Okay, very important. I, uh, this is a very important concept. Um, it is used a lot um, in higher level math uh, because um, a lot of functions um, out there, especially in engineering, don't have um, antiderivatives. Um, so, uh, such as this one, right? E to the minus x squared doesn't have an antiderivative. So we can't, right? So we couldn't actually find the antiderivative here and then apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Uh, it just won't work. Thankfully, uh, we have a, a series for E to the x, right? So that is a series, um, right? For E to the x. And what we can do is we can evaluate this at minus x squared, and then we can go from there. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so for this function, we have e to the minus x squared. We have this going from zero to infinity. Okay. And replace the x with minus x squared. All right, so all I did is just replace this x with this argument, minus x squared. And remember, um, e to the x, right? It can be shown that this series converges for all of x. Right? It means that the domain is infinite for any x that you pick, and you plug it into here, will converge to will basically converge to e to whatever that x value is. So this is good, right? This converges, same thing, right? So it's converging for all of x. Okay, so that is good. So now we're going to take the integral of this, of this series. So we have the integral of the series going from zero to of this infinite series. By the way, this is equal to, this is just minus x to the two n. All right, like that. So let's actually, we can simplify this a little bit more. Okay. Oh, so I can take out the negative. So a lot of times, a lot of times they, um, they like to do that and then we have x to the 2n over n factorial. Okay. So that's what I'm going to put here. Okay. Right, there's our, um, there's the series that we're working with. So now all we have to do is take the integral of this, okay, uh, with respect to x. Okay, so we have a series going from zero to infinity. And by the way, we're going from zero to one. Okay, so this will be, this will be minus one to the n, x to the two n plus one, all divided by n factorial times two n plus one. All right. And then we can go ahead and evaluate from zero to one. Let's go up here, okay. All right, so plugging in or letting x be equals to one, this is going to give us okay, we're going to get one, right? One to the two n plus one is just one. And so that leaves us with minus one to the n on top, divided by our denominator. And then when we plug in zero for x, obviously we're going to get zero here. So this is the, uh, basically this is the solution, um, right? This is the, well, I should say the series that will provide us um, our solution, okay? But the question here is, uh, we want to basically obtain a solution with this, with this tolerance, okay? And that's important in engineering because sometimes when we're trying to 
um, especially in manufacturing, when you're trying to design something, you know, in, in some cases, it may be a really bad idea to use, um, to, to use a very um, accurate value. You want, sometimes you need a little bit of room for error. So if you're putting two pieces together, right? So you need to make sure um, you don't want that, you know, you don't want them to be so tight that they won't move anymore. Okay, there has to be a certain tolerance. And that's why a lot of these type of problems, uh, they need to be approximated with some kind of error. Okay? Uh, same idea um, when it comes to differentials. Okay. All right. Um, so then, right, so the next thing is, right, so the goal here, right, the next step is to figure out how many or to what n value do we need to calculate this for. So I'm going from an infinite series to a finite series. Okay, so we need to figure out, right? We need to figure out what n is. How many terms we need for this, right? So we're going from uh, zero to what, okay? Need to find n. So, by the way, um, this is an alternary, al sorry, alternating series, right? And if you recall, there is a residual. There's a way to bound the error. Sorry, the residual for that. Okay. So this is an alternating series. Okay. Okay, there's an alternate series, and that implies that we can bound the nth plus one term with our error. The error being 0 0.01. Okay, so this, okay, this here will basically set up our, our inequality to figure out what n is. Okay. All right, so let's look at that. Okay, so going back to our original problem, okay, the nth term, remember we're dealing with alternating series. So the way this was derived, okay, the nth plus one term is always less than, right? It's less than a certain error, okay? Uh, the residual basically, right? The residual is, can be shown that's less than n plus one. And to achieve that, we can solve for this. So that was derived using the absolute value of, of the nth term for an alternate series. Okay, so the nth term here will be one over n factorial times two n plus one. So therefore, the nth plus one term has to be this. So again, you, a lot of students make the mistake of putting this, if they're talking about n plus one, sometimes they'll put two n plus one plus another one, but that's not correct. Remember, you're replacing n, think of this as a function, you're replacing n with n plus one. So we get two times, and I'll emphasize this, yeah, I'll emphasize this red here, two times n plus one. Plus one. Okay. So if you use two n plus, if you use two n plus um, right, two, right, two n plus one plus another one, you get two n plus two. That's going to throw off your um, n value. Okay, so okay, so we want to make sure that's correct. Okay. So this is going to give us one over n plus one factorial times two n plus three. 2n plus 2 and then plus 1. So that is, so this is what we want to bound the error with. So there is the uh, inequality that we want to find, that we want to solve here. 
Okay. So the way to do this um, is we can use uh, technology here. Okay, that's fine. Um, you can easily do this on your calculator, which I'm going to show you here. Okay. So we go to Y, and then you can put, basically, you're going to put the expression okay, into here. Okay. So we have, <clears throat> so we have one over, So I'm going to use I'm using x here instead of it, which is it makes no difference. Okay, it's the same idea. So we have one over. Okay, this is going to be x plus one factorial. The fact the factorial button is located under. If you go to math and then you scroll over to the probability menu, and then it's going to be somewhere there. So in this case, it's the fourth fourth value, and then times two x plus three. Okay, so ideally, it's always a good idea to put uh, parentheses in to surround the denominator with parentheses here. That's what I'm going to do. We need one there. So I'm go to second insert, put that in. And then, um, so we, what we want to do is, is to um, look at the table of values. So you go to second and then graph. So you have your x values here in the left column and your y values in the right column. So you want to see where, so for which x values will this, right, which x values will this be less than uh, 0.01? Okay, so scrolling down, so it's not less, so this is still not less than 0.01. This is not, and finally we get this is less than 0.01. Okay, so it's going to be starting at x equals to three. Okay, so that tells us, okay, going back. Okay, so that tells us that this, right, the solution to this is going to be n bigger or equal to three. So obviously it makes sense because as you increase n, right, the larger the n value, the smaller this value is, okay? And this is less than this, okay? So, um, so you want to use the basically choose right let or choose the smallest n value in the set, which is going to be three. Okay. So use n equals to three. So that means we need at least because we're starting from zero here. Uh, we need at least four terms, right? Zero, one, two, three, right? Four terms, okay? In order to get an error. So again, that just means that the that the solution we're finding for this, our approximate solution minus the exact solution. And the reason I'm using quotes is because that solution is also being approximated, okay? But that's using a, a slightly, um, it's using a slightly more sophisticated approach, okay? So the difference between the sophisticated answer and the one that we're attaining, right? Um, it's going to be, when you take the, the absolute difference will be less than that. And this is the n value that we need, okay? So you're going to, right? So then you're going to put it back into, into here, okay? So we're going from zero to three, okay? You have minus one to the power n, all divided by n factorial times two n plus one. So be sure, or don't make the mistake of, you know, don't make the mistake of putting it back into, um, into this one with the series, uh, because that's gonna obviously throw off the answer. So we can use a calculator um, to solve this, or you can use some kind of computational software. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm using a calculator here. Okay, let's see. All right, or you could even do it by hand. It's only what four terms here, so it's not too bad. But 
Um, I'll just go and use the calculator because this number could be, you know, significantly higher. All right, so I'm going to clear this out. Okay. And what we're going to do, okay, um, we can go into, there's a symbolic tool for the summation, okay? So if we go down to, let's see, if we go to math, if you scroll down, in this case, I'm going to scroll up here. So there's summation. And then you just basically put in the components. Okay, so again, I'm using X here instead of N. Same, it's just a different letter. That's all that is. Need to use, so. Need to move this thing in the way. All right, so we're going from zero and then to three. And then we put in the sequence there. Thing is in the way here. For you. Do X plus one. Let's just double check this. Okay, here it is. We have X factorial. So x plus one, yeah. make sure I have the right number of parentheses here. It's a little tedious to put this in here. There's actually a better way or there's an alternate way to do this. Um, minus one, so three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing a parentheses here. Oh, and here, I need a parentheses here. Okay, so let's see. Oh, well, oh, that's not it. Okay, let's do this again here. Like I said, it's very tedious to do on here. In fact, I would let me show you the. So let me show you another way. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Go back into here and try it again. So we're going from X to zero. Move this down. There's, there's a menu, there's a zoom menu in and it's, it's always, it's interfering with this thing. So it's hard for me to see here. Um, you don't, y'all don't see it here, but I see it, it's in front of it's the zoom toolbar, tool menu. Always in the way, okay. All right, so we're going from zero to three. And then we have minus one. And then we're going to power X. Probably that's, I think I left that out last time, but let's see. And then we have the, the denominator. Okay, so let's see what this is. Make sure parentheses are okay here. One, two, three, six. Okay. I do need, I think I do need, just in case, I'm going to put parentheses around the denominator. Oh, 
always good programming practice to do that. For you programmers out there. Okay, so let's see. And there is, okay, so that's much better. I think last time I forgot the power X. Okay, but in any case, um, this is what we need. So that is, right, that is our solution. Let me put this window back here. Okay, so that is the approximate solution. So I'm gonna write it down. Um, so it is, I have it, actually have it here. Okay, so it was, 0 Okay. Seven four two. Ten. So ten decimal places. Okay. All right. So there's the solution we got from. Right from here, that is, so this is, right, basically this represents our approximation um, to this integral, to this definite integral with an error less than 0.01. Okay. Um, the actual solution, the actual solution is this, okay? Well, I should so again, it's it's the exact solution, but it's not really the exact solution. It's again, it's another, it's a better approximation than this. And that is represented in this form. So it's one half the earth, okay, earth one uh, times square root of pi. Okay. So the earth, okay, the earth stands for the error function, which is a um, which is basically. Um, it's basically looks something like this with a con with another with another constant there. Okay, so again, so it's not it's it's basically um, they use this they use this function sometimes in other engineering courses uh, and also other obviously in other math courses. So they don't so because they don't have to write this all the time, they just call it the error function, and it's actually used. Um, one of the things that's used in is um, in robotics because sometimes you have a if you have a robot that's basically tracking something, it's doing an error check, right? So let's say the robot is moving along a line, defined line, and so what it's doing is it's calculating, right? So it's doing a prediction, okay? So it's making sure that that robot stays on the line, and so then it's doing a lot of it's doing some probabilities. To make sure, okay, to make sure that it's not deviating from the from the path. So, so anyway, that that um, those calculations are done through an error function. Okay, so um, but that's a little bit of context of where this is coming from. But anyway, that is still it's still basically it's a it's another um, it's just a different approximation. Okay, but it's equal to Basically, that is equal to this. Seven, four, six, eight, two, four, one, three, three, zero. Okay. Okay, so if we take the Difference. If we take the absolute difference, so I'm going to say this is the exact result here. I 
again, I'll just use double quotes. So exact, okay, it's, but it is another approximation. So the error right, that we have, we take the, if we take the absolute difference uh, between these two, And we get, okay, since I'm using, I'm using 10 decimal places in both of these. So this will come out to be 0 0.0003 0 0.0096901. So you can see that this error is indeed smaller than 0 0.01. Okay. And so if we wanted to get a smaller error, right, then we would just increase, basically increase uh, the number of terms here. Okay. okay, so very, um, yeah, so like I said, this is a very interesting problem. Um, series is very important in mathematics, uh, as well as engineering. You can use, the, obviously you can use them to, um, to approximate definite integrals. Uh, They're also used in differential equations. Um, to come up with um, approximate solutions. It's not, that's not an easy task, but it can be done. Um, and it can be used in, uh, um, in other ways, um, such as the application of Fourier series. Okay. All right, so, um, so that's about it for this topic. And so I'll stop here. Oh, just one more thing, by the way, um, yeah, you can use a computational tool to um, to figure out what this is. In fact, I can show that here. So using Octave, right? There's actually a um, there's actually a um, the error function is built in. So if we say zero point five times the error function of one and then times the square root of pi. And there you go. There's where I got that value. Okay. Um, let's see. And I think I even, let's see, 0 0.6, 0 0.74, 68, I, yeah, I think I rounded a little bit here. Um, and I have it in format long, so, yeah. Okay, I think I got that, I think I got this value from, uh, from uh, Wolfram Alpha. So they may, they do, they, they tend to round things too. Um, to more of a higher degree. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's how you could, uh, again, it's just, it's just an approximation. So, okay. So again, I'll, I'll stop here.